ladies and gentlemen, subscribers and patrons, good evening. Let us play with Google Cloud and Spring Boot, and let us do some hops and sub handling. This means that if you are if you have tried Rabbit in Q, if you have tried Kafka, Kafka then uh, the pop and sub, um, the pop and sub from Google Cloud is will be very natural to you for, for yeah to use. Um, it it's actually yeah it's quite simple. You create some uh, topics just like you do with, with Kafka, and then you create some subscriptions uh, that can actually read from those topics. Um, so it's 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 more simple than I would say it's more simple than RabbitMQ, but you have some of the you have kind of some of the 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 options like you have you can send. You can send uh, failed messages to, or the failed handling of the messages to a dead letter queue, the dead letter topic, as it's called here. Um, and then there's also retention. There's also, you also have to think about, do you want the messages uh, at least once or at most once? And uh, most of the cases you want, you want your messages at least once, and then you want your your applications to actually handle that they can get the same message more than once. So, um, so those are usually the the, the the situations. I've already created um, I've already created an account with, uh, with Google Cloud, of course, uh, and I've created a project named Mike's Demo. I have created one sub topic right here, and it's quite easy to let me just create one more. So here we say create, and here we say demo two. And here we can actually say this is this is my topic. So this is where we will actually place messages to. So this is the kind of the yeah, the, this is where we send messages to. This is the topic. This is where yeah, this is where we, we send messages to. Then we then we can choose um do we want to add a default subscriptions many times if it's um, if you have one uh, subscriber to one topic, then this is exactly what you want. Then you just create uh, then you will get a subscriber with the same name as the topic, and then minus sub in the end, and that is uh, that is usually yeah nine out of ten times that's what you want. You want one uh, one topic, and then you want one subscriber. You have one target application or one target target uh, third party, uh, yeah, a third party uh, yeah, partner or something like that that needs to to get those messages right. So. So that is what you usually do. Then you can choose if you want to use a schema. This is uh, because if if you don't if you don't choose uh, to use a schema, then you can get uh, anything in the, into the topic. Then the, the message body. There are no restrictions to it. You can just send a string. You can send a JSON uh, piece of JSON. You can you can send whatever you want. So you can also send XML. But if you use a schema, then you are forced to actually um, to send that information that you actually expect this will actually um, this in many cases this is actually what you want because especially if you're working with third-party vendors then the, those vendors they, they need to be uh, if they get the if they get the error fast you know fail fast then the, then you don't have to uh, to communicate with them later on and say that uh, you're actually supposed to send this uh, um, to send this uh, field it could be from from person or whatever, or to person or whatever, or to system or from system, um, then they will actually get that error up front instead, in, in, instead when they try to send a message to the, the to that topic. So this is it's always a good day idea. So you get some validated data, some structured data into your uh, in, into your topic. So uh, so use that. Um, that that is a, a good uh, tip. Yes, it takes it takes you 10, 15 minutes to to define that schema. And yes, sometimes you will then actually get some validation errors that, uh, that, that, that that you're not supposed to get because the the validation, the field that you actually expect was not supposed to be there anyway. But then you got that conversation with whoever actually sends, uh, sends messages to the topic and then you got that sorted out and then you're all aligned on the same page. So it's also good as a cooperation uh, and a tool. I'm not going to I'm not going to add it for, for this demonstration right here. I might make another video where, where I use the schema also. Then we have the message retention duration that is not free. Uh, then the, if you if you enable that, that means that then you have a cost with, uh, with in, in the Google Cloud. This means that the um, that you can actually leave all of the messages there uh, for some time. Um, and that I would say that is actually a good that's a good idea if you have a um, when, when you have a real system that uh, where you, your subscribers might not be there right now, right? So you you need to have some kind of ret retention duration on it. Um, and that's that's what you can set right there. 
there's another place on the subscriber uh, on the subscription then you can actually set the uh, f- for how long the messages should be there after they have been acknowledged but that is another setting so let us just go uh, in a, right here I'll, I'll press cancel right now because i already have my topic which is right here you can also as you can see right here you can export it to big uh, query or to to big uh, to cloud storage if you want to so you can convert it to yeah into into one of the other storage uh, features from from the google in the google cloud of course uh, but that's the, not that's not usually the use case for this. Usually, this is when you want to uh, to integrate uh, systems. To, um, yeah, when you have a third party vendor, you have a, some another uh, another division where you, you you cooperate with, and you want to send them information, and you also want to receive information. Then pop and shop is an awesome way to do that. It's it's very stable, and it's a very yeah, it's very stable, and it's also a very fast and efficient way to exchange data. Um, yeah. So let us uh, so this uh, this is the subscription look when we have a topic you can actually have a you have a list of subscriptions you can have multiple subscriptions right here and uh, the default one that i have right here is test topic and then mine sub right here you can also go click on the uh, on the messages then you need to choose a subscription uh, a subscription where you pull the messages from and then you can go and pull the messages right here i think i've acknowledged all of the messages right now so there will be no messages right now um, so let us go back. We have this test topic and sub right here. And you, as you can see right here, I've already been playing a lot with uh, with this uh, topic and sub. Uh, but that's why we have these uh, graphs for what uh, what actually happened uh, like ten minutes ago. But now we have been talking enough, right? So now we know we have a we have a topic. We have a subscription. I've already created a service user. I've downloaded the JSON principles for that uh, for that user. And I have placed it in this folder named, I'll just show you uh, right here. I'm not sure of the content. Uh, of course, I will probably delete that use that uh, service use afterwards. But uh, in your in your Spring Boot application, the promises, then you can set a credentials location right here. And this is right now file. And then it's, uh, it's, it's placed right here. Of course, you can place it wherever you want to on your machine. Or, or, or you can also use an environment variable that's, uh, that points to this file right here. Then we have another thing that is the project ID that is Mike's demo right now. Mike demo. Uh, let me just see. It's actually misspelled. Mike's demo like this. Mike's demo. So this is the project that we have up in the top, and you can see you have an ID right there. That that is ID you want to put there. Um, and then you have so this is these are my custom properties that I have created. Um, but before we get so far, let us create the Spring Boot project. So I pressed File New Project right here. Then I chose uh, next, I just chose all of the default, Java 17 and Gradle, that's fine. One thing that is not fine right here, you cannot use Spring Boot 3 right now as it is with the Google Cloud messaging um, uh, library. If, if you try, you can then you will actually get an error. So if you say uh, Google Cloud right here, we have the we have the messaging GCP uh, messaging right here. And you can see right here, it says that you need to be below 3.0.0. Uh, M1. So that means that you actually need to take 277. So it takes 277. I, I actually tried to see if I could make it work. It is a hassle. There's a lot of things you need to wire up. And as soon as you get a new version of the Google Cloud messaging, then it will fo- uh, fall apart again. So do, don't use Spring Boot 3 and DCP messaging. Wait until they have um, wait until they have, have updated this uh, module so it is compliant with version 3. Um, but you take this one off, take off uh, DCP messaging like this, then you of course, you would choose your usual thing, like uh, you, you you might want some Lumbach, of course. Lumbach. Lumbach is right there. Then you also want some web, of course, bring web. Maybe you also want some some relational database to keep track of which messages you actually have handled. Uh, or maybe a MongoDB to keep keep track of, uh, yeah, to give some audit trail. <laughs> Um, the, you get you get a lot with Google Clouds. You get a lot of insight there, but there are some things um, you you don't get get everything. You also need to um, I would say you uh, you you would have to also create to create an audit trail and maybe keep track of which messages have been handled and uh, haven't been handled. So you when you get the mess- the same message in twice because that can happen or or ten times um, that that depends on how you are how the pop and shop has been set up and your dead letter queuing has been set up. Maybe you have an error in your application, so you don't acknowledge your messages. Uh, then you will continue getting the same messages, of course. So your application needs to be stable and robust and handle that. When you press OK, then you end, then you get an application like this. And then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create these two uh, configuration properties because then it's easy to change, right? So I've, I've named this mic, pops up, topic, mic, pops up. 
subscription because then I can easily get these two values right here, test topic sub and test topic right there. And what you need to do, of course, is you need to create a pop sub configuration. You can name this whatever you want to. I, I could have named this Mike's uh, pop sub configuration. And uh, then I get this weird red. I get that once in, once in a while. It's a bit weird. It's just the annotation processor that has not been configured. That's okay. Uh, but what you need to do is you need to annotate this class. You create a class that you annotate with configuration properties, and then you say that this class should handle and also get should get the the values from Mike that pops up, and then you create and then, and then you create the fields that matches the last part of your uh, of your application properties right here. So that means you will create one name subscription, one name topic, and then when you wire that in so anywhere in Spring Boot, then you will actually have access to those two properties. It's quite cool, and the reason why I like to do that is because then I can easily add a new property here if I suddenly feel uh, the, the the urge to do that. So that that now we have the configuration, but we need to set up, of course, we need to set up some inbound stuff because whereas we cannot receive anything. Um, yeah, just one more thing. At your at your application class at uh, your application class you need to, you have to go and set enable configuration properties and then the name of that uh, configuration class that you just used or else it would not be uh, or else it would not be populated with the values from your application properties file okay so now let us go to look and look at the inbound configuration this is um, here here some of the magic starts you can annotate this with configuration this means that spring boot will look inside this class right here and it will look for Beans and it will actually um, and it will, it will also wire in this uh, pop sub configuration that we just created. And here we are creating two beans. One is a message channel adapter. Message channel adapter. Um, yeah, and it's it's just uh, an adapter that will actually handle. It will actually set up how should um, how should the message handling actually. Uh, be handled and um, should the acknowledge mode be manual or auto that's very quite important if you set it to auto that means that if you are when you when you handle the messages later on this is i will this is this beam right here but let us uh, not focus on that right now but when you handle your message later on if you did not throw an exception then um, then you would actually acknowledge the message this is what you can set right here if you set it to manual that means that your code wise has to actually acknowledge the original message or else it will not be acknowledged. Uh, acknowledged. Or what does acknowledge mean? Acknowledge means that your message has, is done being handled and, and there was no errors and that uh, it will be deleted from the topic, from the Google uh, Cloud topic. That's what it means. So you will, the, the message uh, is, is ready for it to be deleted. That, that's what acknowledgement means. Um, so this is an adapter we need to create. So we need to set up this, these things. One of the things we set up in our adapter is this uh, inbound channel adapter. Here we set a, we need to set a subscription name. So here we set up a subscription name, and this is where I use my property that we I just created in my application a properties file. Get subscription. This get subscription right here will actually fetch this value that I have right here. So it will actually put this value in uh, that I marked right there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now we have created this message channel adapter, pops up inbound channel adapter for inbound communication. Um, then we need something like this. We need to set up a message channel and uh, this needs to be a new direct channel. And that's just how it is. It does, yeah, create a channel with default round robin uh, strategy. So that is just that is part of the um, Spring uh, messaging uh, messaging framework that we we have to create this one right here, message channel, and that is because we use a message message channel up here, we will get this injected up here. So that means that's why we have to create this one right here. Um, I have to uh, I must say I actually don't know if there's any, if there are any any other options than than the direct channel. I have I have not I need to dig into that of course, uh, but this is. This is the, the default setup, and if you read the default documentation from Google Cloud and Spring Boot, you can actually go to this in, in Spring uh, at the Spring documentation. There's an, a chapter regarding pop and sub uh, Google Cloud. Then you will get uh, exactly this code right here. You will also get exactly this code right here, except for the except for the configuration part that I, that I added right there. Okay, so now we have the input channel. Here we have this is the handing of the messages. So this is actually the interesting part right here. We get a message in, so we create a message receiver, and uh, this message receiver needs to be annotated with service activator. So this means that when a message uh, arrives on the 
pops up input channel. This means on the subscription that you actually chose that you configured. Then this uh, method will be called, and this method will be called with then with this uh, message right here. So we have a message. The message has a payload body. There's a payload body with some bytes in it, and that of course can be converted into a string. Uh, sometimes it will be, most of the times it will actually be a piece of JSON, right? So you will have a structured data format that got in right here. And most of the times, because you set up a schema on your um, on your on your on your pub on your topic, uh, then you would uh, then you would actually know that this is, for instance, a spaceship or a price for a flower or something or whatever whatever it is that you expect. Then we have some headers right here. I'm I'm going to leave this out commented because there are a lot of headers on a message. The one of the things that we have get on a message is actually a message ID. This message ID can actually be used if you want to make sure that you don't handle uh, the same message most multiple time. If you want to check for that, then you can get the message ID and then you can um, then of course you have so stored somewhere that you already have handled this um, this ID, and then you'll just continue to the next message, of course. You will also get a lot of dates. Uh, yeah, you'll get a lot of weird stuff there. Uh, let us let us not focus on that in this video. So we have the original message right here. So this is because we want to convert it into a basic acknowledgeable pop and sub message. And uh, and actually, this is the keyword, acknowledgeable. We want to acknowledge the message. That's, like, that's actually what we want to do. So we will get some, uh, yeah, we will, we, will, we will just say, get the headers from the um, original message and um, and then it acknowledges. So this, this is just a conversion, so we can actually uh, acknowledge it right here. And if we don't have this line in the end, then we'll continue handling the same messages again and again. I'll show this in just a minute. Okay, let us skip a bit fast uh, forward right here because we also have an outbound configuration. This is where we can send messages. So now, every time we, uh, messages appear on the topic, we will receive them and we will, uh, we will spray this out in the log right here. But we also want to be able to uh, publish messages to to, the, to a topic. And right now, it's, it's the same topic as we also subscribe to. This means that we're sending messages to ourselves. Yes, it's weird, but it's uh, of course it's configurable. So we can just create a new topic and then um, send to that topic later on if we want to. Um, this is just for a demonstration purpose. Again, we have the configuration right here. Then we have something called service activator. This is an output channel. So now we have a pops up output channel, and the output channel is uh, defined um, right here. So we have the default request channel right here that this is a messaging gateway a messaging gateway you can that's like a postman right so oh, not the post office actually this is like the post office so here we can here we can actually send uh, this means that every time that we send a message like this send to pops up then we will actually send a message to this channel so the to, to the spring message channel right here and then we have a service activator right here that would actually um that would pick up on that and then it will um, it will create a new pop sub handler, and then it will use a default template. So this is the default uh, pop sub uh, template, and then this is the then this is the topic. This is the the topic that we have configured. And again, what it actually means it is that it will just send the it will just send the message to to the topic. So that was a bit it's a bit less code for the outbound than the inbound, but uh, yeah. And then we have a controller. So this means that we can actually send a rest message now to, um, if I send that to send slash for slash, and then I, uh, I have some kind of message inside the body. It could be JSON, it could also just be a string. Then we would actually say, then we call mes the messaging gateway, and then we will say send pop to shop. Uh, send to pop shop, sorry, yeah. And we have the gateway right here. This was the pop shop outbound gateway that we have right here, and we have the configuration of it, of course, right there. So this is actually an interface that we, we create right here. So we have the interface right here. And yeah, so that is uh, a lot of times with Spring, you just create the interface and then Spring will create the implementation itself. So it's actually not that much. We have one, two classes actually that you, you have to, to, you, to create. And then the other two classes are actually, they are, those are the controller and uh, the configuration, those are of course uh, not mandatory. This is just something I did to make life easier for myself. Now let us try to we'll go to services. We'll see if we can find the application. Run configuration types. Let us say 
Spring Boot right there. And then I can press stop because it was actually already running. I want to I want to start it up so you can actually see the startup block and what's actually happening. So let us start up the application. And the first thing that you'll probably experience is that you'll you'll get an error and, and you'll get an error that you cannot find that uh, credential file or there's something wrong with your credentials because you need to have the right roles, of course, uh, set up um, on the, in the Google Cloud and you have to set, uh, set up a service account of course and you'll have to point to this json right here um but i don't again i don't have any errors that's uh, so i'm quite I'm, I'm i'm quite happy another error you can get when you start up to begin with that is yeah we have the yeah we have some um, that is the credentials uh, another error you can actually get that is if you have not created the topic or the uh, subscription if you if you forgot to create those and if you're not creating those programmatically you can do that but i will save that for another video but if you forgot to create your topic or your subscription then you, it will be quite clear um but uh, yeah the, the problem will be quite clear especially with the subscription the i think the topic error you will get that when you try to send a message the first time okay so that's quite cool now let us get some messages mike so we can actually handle these messages okay 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 i've already created a curl right here so this means i can actually curl in a hello message i can curl in a hello message which is right here hello this is a test hello this is a test um for mike just change a bit so you can see that it is actually uh, live and it works and then i and then i curl this to 8080 with sense because um that was the endpoint that we created so let's just press play let us see whatever happens so now we're actually sending a message to um we're sending a message to the uh, to first to our Spring Boot application, and then and then it will send it to the topic. Let's go down and see. Whoa, what happened here? <gasps> yes, send this message to outbound channel. Hello, this is a test for Mike. Great, message arrived. Payload. Hello, this is a test for Mike. I am so proud of myself already. So this means that it actually it actually works. So we send an, we send a message from the yeah, to the the controller, and we got it right here. Let us play with some more messages because it, right here we can actually also push. We can actually send some messages to the to the topic. So if I press topic right here, I go to my topic. Then I go to messages. Then I can actually say publish messages, and then I can say spam the spam the message system with maybe twenty messages, and uh, yeah, one second uh, apart. That's fine. And here I can actually create some JSON. Uh, I can create some JSON right here. This could be um, this could be a flower flower and this could be rows here we have a rose and here we could have a quality something with quality that could get a eight out of ten baby right so this yeah let us just publish that so what happens now let us see so we can actually see pending messages and success and error messages so this is a way where we can test our topic we can test our topic we can also tip we are actually also testing this the the, the, the subscription so we're also testing this the, the, subscri the subscription because if we would get any errors then we will see that right here see look here here we get all the payloads so this is our spring boot application and we get all of these payloads right here flower rows flower rows flower rows yes 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 cool one per second do we get more oh we have um, all of them ended up with success so that is quite awesome right that is quite awesome. And this also means if we look at the, we should see something with the metrics. Yeah. Here are the metrics and the uh, messages. There are no messages right now. Let us try to skip the acknowledge part, actually. I'll just, I'll comment the acknowledge part. right here in the inbound configuration right here i'll, I'll not uh, i'll not acknowledge me the message this means that the message will just uh, lie there still and then i'll restart the application i could actually also just stop the application i just want to show you that you can actually see uh, some of the messages in uh, the google cloud um, in the google cloud console and then you can then you'll get the fields at least it will not show you the whole message if it's too long but uh, yeah let us see what happens now Again, yeah, let, let me just, I'll just, um, I'll use my package JSON where here, I, here I can actually send a spaceship. Yeah, here I can send a spaceship. I've prepared this spaceship right here, model, fuel, captain. Let us send that to the, 
the Spring application that they would, that uh, will then forward it to the, the topic. So I will send this right here. Curl send ship. Yes, let us see what happened. Yes, we got it. We got the spaceship right here. Model round fuel. But we did not acknowledge it this time. Oh, see, look, now we get it again. This is because it tries to, the subscription is actually set up not to, um, not to have this uh, back off um, retention. Uh, and you should always set up your, you should always set up your subscription with an exponential uh, back off retention, so it will not continue spamming your system with, uh, with, with messages um, that can lead to errors in your application. We should, um, yeah, you should use the back off retention, and then you should also make sure that they end up on the dead letter uh, topic on a on dead letter, letter topic. We can set up that, that up. That's a bit more complex. I want to focus a bit uh, on Spring Boot in this video right here, but of course you can set that up uh, also. Um, yeah, so we continue getting the message right now. This also means that if we pull the message, if I pull the messages right here, and if I'm then I should be able to get the message. Yeah, that is, and look. What actually happened right there we actually got this is the message but if i go to the right side right here then all of the fields were actually picked out and uh, and put as a as a column and then you can actually sort on the fuel on the captain um so th this makes it a bit easier to find the right um your the right messages you can also filter your messages right here you can create some filters so you can see what is happening to your messages Right now, the deadline exceeded, um, so yeah. So the deadline, the deadline just exceeded, and that's why you should have a dead letter topic, so you can get these uh, messages back again. And then you also use it for debugging because then you go in and look at these messages, and then you can see ah, it's because they they don't have any destination. The spaceship doesn't have a destination uh, field or property, right? It doesn't have a it doesn't have a destination property, so so that's not good, right? Um, the it will we will continue trying to, we will continue to to try to get that message right here because we have not set up the the back off retention and this this deadline that exceeds right here it just shows that something is wrong um, which it should have been handled by now um, yeah but and then now it goes back to acknowledge so this is because uh, yeah it, it has some it has some different st stages right now it's waiting to be acknowledged. And then at some point, yeah, it deadline exceeded. It should have been it should have been acknowledged now by the application, but it was not. So then it knows okay something is wrong, and then uh, then it will try again on the subscription. So that that's how it works. There's not that much logic to it, but that's why you need the dead letter queue, of course. That is actually it. I uh, I really like pop and shop. It's 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 really really easy to to make work. Uh, you don't have to think about uh, your rapid in queue application and uh, backup and uh, scaling scalability you don't have to think about all of that that is actually uh, all of that is included in this uh, google cloud as usual that is uh, of course the usual benefit of using the cloud you don't have to think about scaling you just scale and pay extra <laughs> yeah you just pay pay some more then get the company uh, credit card and then you uh, then you're good to go right um it's so yeah so there's a lot of things you don't have to think about the same with uh, apache kafka uh, it's quite complex actually to set up in uh, uh, both both RabbitMQ and, and, and Apache Kafka. It can be quite complex to set up in a cluster. Of course, when you know, as usual, when you know how to do it, it's, it's not complex. Uh, but it's it's just something that why 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 would you also have to think about that, right? So that that's why we love the cloud. Uh, that's why we choose the cloud, right? Sometimes you would not choose the cloud because when you choose the cloud, then of course you are also a bit getting married to whatever. Uh, cloud you're using the most because um yeah for instance this pop and shop it's it's not the same if you go to another cloud and it has another name another brand uh, over there of course but it is awesome asynchronous technology rabbitmq apache kafka pop and shop it is cool it's awesome if you haven't tried it out then please do so and i will um, i'll share this project as usual on my github account just search, search for it it's named uh, pops up right there if I'm not too lazy, then I will also place the uh, URL in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening or day. As you can see, it's actually a day right now. It's um, The sun is shining. That is why suddenly I got a bit transparent in my forehead. Can we see if there's anything in there? Yes. 
Thank you very much. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.